go on there. I do now. Hey, it's good. Hey, we didn't need to turn it on. Um, I read something um, that uh, 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 it was good. God creates. He doesn't um, replicate or something like that. God creates. He doesn't. He, he makes each individual. He makes you who you are. And uh, what a blessing. But this passage of scripture, and then we'll go to um, um, our, our passage of scripture tonight in uh, Exodus chapter 10. But uh, I want to read this to you. You don't have to turn there, but it's in Hebrews chapter 12. It'll be a good verse to, to memorize. Uh, really, <laughs> the, whole, the whole Hebrews 12 there is just uh, it's rock solid. He says, wherefore? And of course, you know, he's just come through the, 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 what we call the, the hall of faith, right? All these different ones there. And he says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I know Richie, uh, through the years, has read uh, biographies of missionaries. And uh, I think that's a good thing to do, you know, is read about people that uh, gave their lives uh, for the cause of Christ. He says, um, uh, We're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Amen? Do you realize there's so many weights, different for you, different for me, but there's just so many things, folks. We're, we're busy and all these other things. Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Now, you see that, right? There, everybody has different sin, something in their life that gets them off course. You know, you can look at somebody else and, you know, I, I was thinking about people when Richie, Richie was praying you know, about people not coming to church and not having a desire to church. And, and, and God brought me back when I was a kid, when I was a teenager. I skipped church. I, I used to go with my sister sometimes. I wanted to go somewhere else. I didn't want to be in church and those kind of things. I should have compassion for people and things. God brought me to a place where I love church, folks. And he can do the same thing for anybody. It's not, it's not me. It's God. Amen. Right? When I was a young person, I... I didn't want to go to church. I, said, I want to do other things. I want to do all this other stuff. You know, I want to skip out. You know, but that's not where I'm at today. But it's all by the grace of God. Amen. Praise God. He said that sin was easy to beset us. He said, let's let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We're all in a race, folks. And it's not a hundred yard dash. It's not, they don't even do the 100-yard dash anymore. <laughs> it's not the 100-meter dash. It's not the 200 or 400. You know, it's the marathon. It's a marathon. In a marathon, you have to pace yourself, right? <laughs> and in this life, you have to have patience. Sue knows that well. She was running cross-country yesterday. I'm proud of her. You know, a lot of people want to get out there and, um, uh, and run at all. You know, and I've seen, I've seen people out there that, now listen to me, folks. You listen to me? i see seen people out there in all shapes and sizes and, and running this, this uh, 5K, and I'm like, hey, I'm proud of them. To even get out there and try it. Doesn't matter if, they, if it takes them 40 or 50 minutes or however it takes them to run it. At least they're out there, right? Remember what I told you James Cockham said, you know, about this guy up there in Asheboro? Uh, holding these signs up. So at least he's out there telling people about Christ. Amen. We're always critical. Let's be careful about being critical of people. And I know people are out there doing wrong things and stuff like that. But really the question is, what are we doing? And so what I want you to ask yourself tonight as we look at this passage of Scripture, what you're going to see, again, constantly, you're going to see Pharaoh, picture of Satan, trying to get Moses and Aaron to compromise. How many of you would say tonight that you know in your life that you have compromised? Just me, John, and a few uh, <laughs> you know, We all compromised. We've all compromised. What is compromise? Now, if we've compromised, you all know what it is, right? If we've all done it. Right? Basically. Not doing something that you that that you said you would do. Let me give you an example. The church of Pergamos. They 
everybody in the Roman Empire once a year was to take the oath that Caesar is Lord. And they compromised and said, what difference those few words make? We'll say it. There you go. Right? Well, you know, I, I believe in my heart, so it doesn't matter what I say. And listen, folks, all these thoughts are from the devil and from the world. The world wants you, and ultimately the devil, because he's, he's, he's in charge of the world system. The world system, and by the way, listen, we're talking about everything. When we talk about the world system, folks, we're talking about the educational system. We're talking about the political system. We're talking about the sports system. We're talking about everything. The devil's in control of all these things. Listen, he is in control of the, system, the world system. In the Bible, it's clear that we, we, we're to use the world system to bring glory to God, not let the world system compromise our faith towards God. Amen? And so that's what you're going to see, really a clear picture here with Pharaoh trying to get Moses and Aaron to compromise what God said. God told them what? He said, you're all going out, all the animals, all the people, everybody is leaving Egypt and they're going to go, and they're going to sacrifice and serve and worship God. Amen? That's what God said to Moses and Aaron, what they were supposed to do. And God in the same way. Right? When he bought us out of slavery. What kind of slavery? The slavery to sin. Right? God said, I have, I have bought you. <laughs> and really, the truth of the matter is, Praise God, amen, that God owns us. Now, folks, listen. Praise God that God doesn't treat us like the devil, the world does, like property. Now, I've told you this. Listen, I hate this statement. I'm just telling you, if any independent fundamental Baptist is listening to me, and if you're listening to me, I hate this statement about Going out and say, hey, these are good prospects. I don't like it. I don't like saying when, we, when we're going to go visit somebody, these are good prospects. These, these are prospects. These are people. Amen? we got to get the right terminology in our hearts. These are people that need the Lord. They're not prospects. Well, this one, they probably can't do anything for the church. Well, what are you doing for the church? If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be able to do anything for the church. Amen? Well, we get these mentality. We've made this, hey, I almost said a stinking business. And that's what we've done, though. We made church a business. It's not a business. It's an organization. Do you realize everybody in here, folks, have problems? Can you go back with me? You, you young people weren't in here, but, man, these... You, the, God, God felt and heard the burden of the people of Israel. They were beaten down, discouraged, disappointed. They were in slavery, beaten, labored, right? Right? Man, there is so much to say here. I'm just telling you, oh, man, there's so much to say here. There really is. God, help us. Remember what I said earlier at the beginning? Christ is still the answer. Amen. He's still the answer. He's never not been the answer. He's still, God is still the answer. And so here in this passage of Scripture, it's all because of God. Right? God he saw, he knows our need. Our greatest need is him. Amen. It's him. He's, he's what we need in our, in our disappointment, in our discouragement, in our battles. And, and then he's getting, he put us together, right? That we might be able to share and help each other. Praise God. It's like I told you when I was, uh, John, you weren't in here just a minute ago. I was talking about when you and Michael were running and I would, I'd be at different points and run beside you and, and, and try to encourage you. And, you know, and, and, uh, and how it brought me to tears. And I was weeping, you know, thinking about that motivation. I'm gonna, and I'm going to miss coaching this year. This is, uh, this, is, this is in my fabric, 
my, my, my fiber, whatever you want to call it, it's in my makeup, and uh, I enjoy it, but uh, I want to motivate people to, to walk with God and to serve God, but you know what? i got to walk with God and serve God and walk with God. i got to make sure, you know, that I'm spending my time, ask somebody else to pray for me today, that I'll, I'll spend my time practically uh, with what God wants me to do, amen? Right? And so God here has... He's, he's heard the cry, and, and he's delivering them, and he's brought these plagues, right? And, and here we are. We've come down to the 8th, ninth, and 10th plague. And um, God has already told Moses and, and, and Aaron, he said, Pharaoh ain't going to listen, you know. But I'm telling you, I'm going to deliver you. Amen. And, and, and God told us the same thing, amen. He's going to, and now I don't, I don't get tired of saying this, folks, because it's so true. God, praise God, first and foremost, when he saved us, he delivered us from the penalty of sin. Amen. The, the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have been free, praise God, delivered from the penalty of sin. And then in, in Romans chapter 6 and 7 and 8, God has delivered us from the very power of sin. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. Folks, listen. Listen. We got it. Maybe, maybe we need to read Tozer's book. I talk back to the devil. Listen, the devil tells us, you know, you're always going to be like this. It's always going to be this way. It's always going to be like that and all this. But the Bible tells us sin shall not have dominion over you. Amen. And so if we're a born again, blood ball believer, then we need to know that we've been delivered from the very power of sin. But praise God. Hallelujah. One day we're going to be delivered from the very presence of sin. Now, folks, there's not a person in this world right now, I'm talking about people that are living on earth, that have a clue how that's what it's going to be like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't. But I tell you, those that have gone on to be with Jesus do, <laughs> amen, God's going to deliver us from the very presence of sin. <clears throat> and so God heard their cry, and God is teaching them also. There's all these gods. Now, this, 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 they, um, uh, Egypt, you know, they had all these gods and God brought these plagues down upon their gods to show them that he was the one true God. But he's also showing Israel and, and Moses and Aaron his great power. Remember how I told you he's developing Moses as a leader. Amen. He's using Moses uh, to, to show them God and who God is and that God is all powerful. He's all knowing. And no matter what difficulty you might go through down in this life, you have the all-powerful God working in your, in, in your life and in your heart, and he can help you through every situation. He's the answer. That's easy to tell people. The Bible has all the answers. <laughs> the question is, do you know what the answers are in the Bible? Are you going to the Bible for the answers for your life? And so we left off last week where, where Pharaoh says, he says, now, who's going to go? <laughs> who's going to go? Remember? Uh, how he, he said, and, uh, mm -mm, and uh, mm -mm, excuse me, and, and also that the Pharaoh's servants came to him and said, man, listen, this is not good. <laughs> There's a lot of bad things happening here. How long are you going to let these people bother us? <laughs> right? We need, to, we need to do something here. And so the Bible says in verse 8 of chapter 10, uh, Exodus chapter 10, and Moses and Aaron were brought again to the Pharaoh, and he said to them, go serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? <laughs> who, who are you going to take? Now listen to me, folks. Hasn't he already told them who's going? <laughs> right? We can't compromise. You know, doesn't it go back to the Garden of Eden? Yay, as God said. Are you sure that's what God wants you to do? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, right? Compromise. The devil will always get you thinking in the wrong direction. You need to go back again. Now, this is so important, folks, because I, I've been here so many times that, that I've heard different preachers say this. Don't make a decision that God has shown you in the light when you're in the dark. God will show you things and teach you things. He'll teach all of us. And, and then bad things will happen. Different things will happen. And then we're like, oh, well, should I? No. 
You need to listen to the word of God and what God says. And Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds. We will go. We must hold a feast unto the Lord. See how important it is? Amen. This is what God has said. And he said to them, let the Lord be so with you. As I will let you go and your little ones, look to it, for it is evil before you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not so. Go now ye that are men and serve the Lord. For that ye did, ye did desire. Really, what, what uh, uh, Pharaoh was saying in verse 10 is, you know, it's really, well, ain't no way I'm doing this. Really, he's basically defying God and what God has told him to do. He's like, yeah, you're God. He said, this is what you're going to do. He said, mm -mm -mm, excuse me, he said, not so now, ye, ye that are men and serve the Lord, for, ye, for that ye desire. And they were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. He said, no, only the men are going to go. And the Bible says in verse 12, this eighth plague. And the Lord said, Moses, stretch out thy hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts that have made up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land and even all the hail that left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land of all the day and all the night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought, brought the locusts. Notice here, again, this was not uh, uh, a miracle per se or a making of the locusts. He just brought an east wind and he push the locusts over there from this place where they were. The Bible says the locusts went all over, all over the land of Egypt and rested in all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them, there were no such locusts as they. Neither after them shall be such. So there's never in a time of Egypt's history that has ever been a devouring of locusts like this. Ever. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened. That's how many locusts there were. And they eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees uh, which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees or the herbs of the field uh, throughout all the land of Egypt. And again, didn't touch, didn't touch the Israelites' place. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Did you notice anything there? Huh? Against, you. against you and against mm -mm, the Lord, your, your God. It's not his God. This is not, this is not true repentance. This is not true faith. This is not, he's not believing. He, all he's doing here, hey, it's your God and I've sinned against you. And then notice what he says in verse 17. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once and entreat the Lord, your God, that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. It's amazing again, like I've told you before, to see the mercy of God. We, we ask these questions quite often. Could Pharaoh be saved? Yes, Pharaoh could have been saved. Could he not? Of course he could have. He chose this route. Did God know the route he was going to choose? Yes, he did. Do you understand all that? No, you don't. Nobody does. Well, folks, listen, we've got to quit focusing on all these other kind of things. The thing is, are you saved? Have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior? Is he working in your life? Amen. I hope so. So he went out from Pharaoh and he treated the Lord. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. It's incredible, isn't it? Do you see the miraculous hand of God? Can God do anything? Yes, folks, yes. I mean, the Bible makes it perfectly clear. He, he brought the east wind in and, and spent all these locusts in there. Then he, he, he brought the west wind in. We talked about this uh, the other night. And, and, and he pushed them all the way, all the way. Amen. He's in control of the weather. He's in control of all these things. And then the Bible says, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven that there may be darkness 
over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Now, this is incredible here. Now, how many of you ever been in darkness where the darkness could be felt? Anybody? And, and where were you, Andre? Limbro Caverns. Caverns, okay. Uh, J. Ron McGee mentions these caverns out in California uh, that he was in, and uh, he said he's never been in a place before or since this place and where you couldn't even, you, you could actually feel the darkness. And he said, I, actually, in that cave that they sang, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, you know, in there, he said, but, he said, they no longer let him sing that. Of course, that was back in the 70s, you know, because the, the, the unbelievers were offended by that. So they were still offended in the 70s, folks, even, even back then with these kind of things. And, uh, but uh, this darkness, darkness is, uh, yeah, right? There's just something about darkness, isn't it? And when you, and you can't even see your hand in front of your face, and that's what he's talking about here, the, these caverns that Andre's talking about there, if you've ever been in them, of course, J. Vernon McGee's, you know, where, where the darkness can be felt. This had to be such an, uh, an eerie, eerie time. And really the thing is, uh, when, when it's pitch black and dark, uh, you really can't do anything. You can't move. Right? It's just, you got to stand still. You know, and I've come over here to the church before, and, and I, I try to, I, I, I mess with myself, you know, when it's pitch black, and I try to walk back and say, well, I know where everything is, and, and I can try to get back there, bam, and I end up hitting a table or something. Y'all don't do stuff like that, but I do, and uh, just for the fun of it. And, uh, but anyway, darkness that can be found. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Now listen to me, three days. Now, folks, listen. We're not talking about three minutes, <laughs> three hours. We're talking about three days. Can you imagine what that must have been like? I mean, the, 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 the just, did you realize God can cut off the lights? <laughs> right? Darkness. Three days. Now, notice what it says here. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. <laughs> now, folks, listen. I've told you these stories before, and I, I just I just marvel. And, and again, we're all we're all fit for we we had our you know you know 2020, 2019, 2020, and it is coming again. People, people are gonna do this. Uh, you know, the craziness of, uh, of no toilet paper, no uh, formula and diapers and all these, and, and cat food, oh man, cat food, uh, all these different things are just, we're, we're out of, and you go in the store and the shelves are empty and all these different kind of things, and, and we're so fearful, and you know, all he, all he tells us now, <laughs> you're all guilty, we're all guilty, every last one of us in here, you know, we're guilty. Of not depending upon God. We're like, oh, <laughs> oh. I remember in, in, in 1999, you know, when, when uh, uh, all this stuff was going to take place, you know, with the, and, and, and preachers were preaching and preachers were telling people, you remember that? I'm talking about good men. Told us to stock up, the end times is coming. And man, it, it, uh, <laughs> and then it happened and all these people were foolish. Right? Now, are you listening to me tonight, folks? Listen, God, God's taking care of his people. It's, 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 it's dark, pitch black in Egypt. And God gave his children light. Amen. So listen to me. Can I help you? No matter how dark this world gets, we can still be light in the midst of the darkness. Amen. That's what God's called us to be. Light in the midst of the darkness. Man, have you ever... Seeing so many crazy stuff that's going on in our society. Now, folks, listen, I, I, I don't think I ever heard this word when, when I was, I just heard it recently, narcissist. Have y'all heard? I haven't heard that word that's just over the last year, so it's the first time. I've not heard it before, but, man, it's just, it's so prevalent today. Man, there's so many narcissists. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's narcissists in you and me. That's called a flesh. If it wasn't for the grace of God, we'd all be narcissists. 
right? I mean, when you read about these people and the darkness and how they are and how they act, and, and God wants us to pull out of that. Amen. He wants us to be light in that. The Bible says, again, that, that excuse me, uh -uh, that, that, that there was light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Sounds good, doesn't it? Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. <laughs> what do we call that again? Compromise. Compromise. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle shall, our cattle shall go with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our cattle shall go with us. There shall not be a hoof left behind. For therefore, I mean, for thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. God's told us to take everything. We don't even know how much we're going to need to serve God and to sacrifice to God. But we're taking it all. Compromise. The devil has used this and the world has used this. For centuries. To get God's people. Go away. From their convictions of God. And what God would have them to do. Now it's not ironic. That Richie prayed. About people not going to church. Today. Why do people. Why is this church. Not filled on Sunday morning. Sunday night and Wednesday night. Why is it not filled. You tell me. <laughs> Hello, this is participation. I want y'all to be on YouTube instead of me saying it. I want y'all to help me out. Come on. Help me out, folks. I think the Jewish people need your God. Huh? The Jewish people, they need your God every day. They need to get help. He didn't need this their life. Yeah, they did it. But do we? <laughs> No. Yeah. Compromise. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons or excuses that people don't come to church. But the real reason, folks, for most people is because they have something better to do and they don't really want God. And they don't really focus on what God has done for them in salvation. That's the real reason. It's the same reason why we don't serve God. Folks, listen, church is just basic. It's just basic. God's people ought to come to church. Amen. But it's just basic. I'm telling you, folks, people that don't go to church, you mark it down. Most of them don't read the Bible. There might be a few that do. But if you, listen, come on. It's compromise. We just got to admit it. Right? Now, folks, listen. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? God didn't have to hear these people's cry. God did not have to save you. He didn't have to save me. Did we, let me ask you something. Did we deserve to be saved? Did the children of Israel deserve to be taken out of that bondage they in? No, God chose to take them out. He chose to get you and I out of our sin bondage. Man, we ought to be the most thankful people in all the world, amen. But I'm telling you, I've seen some of the most selfish, hard-hearted Christian people that I've ever seen in my life. Anger, frustration, everything to boot in life, including myself. No, folks, listen, if you think I'm including me, you're wrong. I'm including me. God help us to be a better people because God deserves it. Amen? I mean, my soul, folks, we're selling out on God. You're not selling out on me. You don't come to church for me. You don't do what you do for me. Right? You see, God's calling these people out, right? For a purpose, for sacrifice and service to God and worship. Amen? 
Man, I sent out a text, I think it was today, on this thing of people think worship is a feeling. I don't feel like it. People don't go to church, folks, because they don't feel like it. People don't worship because they don't feel like it. Worship is an act of the will. It's choosing. Do we understand that? Let's go with me. Just bear with me just one second. I'll be right back with you. We don't have time tonight. We don't have time tonight. But I'm going to this passage in Job chapter 1. And Job has just lost everything, earthly speaking, he could possibly lose. Everything in his life. All these things have been taken out from him. It's like, bam, bam, bam. Just keeps happening. Bam, bam, bam. You think he's living in darkness? You think it's a dark day for Job? Well, sure it is. It's a bad day. You ever had a bad day like this? No. Let me, let, me, let me help you out. You've never had a day like Job had. Come on, everybody. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Shake your head like you. No, I haven't. Maybe you need to say that with me. You've never had a day like Job had. Right? Is anybody in here? You put all of our problems, all of our difficulties, everything that we've possibly gone through in our lives. It's not going to pair to this. You realize, would you put yourself in this man's position? Would you understand that this man had heartbreak? Would you read the next 30-some chapters in this man's life, how he struggled within of what was going on and where's God at? Bible says in Job chapter 1 verse 20 then Job arose and he rent his mantle he shaved his head he fell down upon the ground and worshipped huh what can I ask you a question did Job worship on feelings No, no, he exercised his will. He chose to worship in the midst of a mess and tragedies in his life. And he said this, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's an easy song to sing, but it's a much different reality to live. Amen. In all of this, Job, sin not, nor charge God foolishly. Now, if there was ever a time for a man to compromise, I think it would have been right there, don't you? Right? But let me tell you something. Folks, listen to me. The only way the man was able to do it was because of God. And all through, all through the rest of these chapters of Job, God takes us through there. And, and, and Job, you know, he, he's, he's trying to understand all this. And, and then he starts defending himself and all these different things. And, and then God says, pick up your bootstraps, buddy. Quit you like a man. Stand before me. I got something to say to you. <laughs> That's something when God says that to you, isn't it? Isn't it? He said, where were you? Right? Isn't that what he said, Richie? He said, where were you? When I made this and I made that and I did this. He said, where, where were you at? And you know, the Bible tells us in the later chapters, God took his worship right there in chapter 1 and he elevated that worship there. In chapter 40 through 42. He said, I thought I knew you. He said, my man, now I really know you. Who you are. Amen. And so God uses tragedy and tribulations and temptations and trials and all these things in our life. Why? Why, pastor? So that we might know God. 
and who he is, and then we might not compromise on him. They might choose God over everything else, and 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 and, and praise be to God that we don't we can be like Moses and we can say, no, 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 that's not what God said. This is what God said. It's so easy to listen to the flesh and the world and devil and all these other kind of things. Listen, the reason why we don't read our Bibles, the reason why we don't walk with God, the reason why we do what we do is because we want to do what we do. God is here. God is now. God wants us and wants to show us who he is and his, his power and, it, and his life. And yet you and I keep choosing to compromise and listen to the devil. Oh, I can't do that. Or, yeah, yeah, I know you can, but God can that's the whole thing. Quit compromising on God. Right? I have learned so much now. There's not a lot of people that have the opportunity that I have. It's just truth. It's truth. I say this jokingly about Susanna. She's being raised by her grandparents. <laughs> Because really the truth of the matter is, I am a grandparent, <laughs> right? And so it's just different. Now listen, listen to me, John and Hannah, they're in here and tonight. Becca and Micah are not here tonight. You guys are a part of, and this is, this is just, I hope this will help you guys and not hinder you. You guys are a big help to your dad to be able to help Sue because of the things that I learned, the mistakes and the different things that I, I did that I wish I wouldn't have done. If I could go back and change things, I can. Do you understand that? I can. But I, but I, but I can help Sue along and learn some things, and you guys are a part of that. I, I looked so down on my dad for years. I looked down on my dad because I never had a father. But I don't look down on my dad today. My dad, man, what a, what a, you know, I've told you this before, giving him this lawnmower, man, it's going to be one of the highlights of my life. It was just a blessing to be able to do that for my dad. And, and many people contributed. I, I don't look back, and I hope you guys don't do, look back on your dad and the mistakes that he made and, and, the, and the things that he, he didn't do right. And hopefully I did some things right for you guys. And, and uh, But my dad today, means more to me than he ever has in my entire life. God has done that. You see, God can, can change us and, and help us to be better and, and teach us things and we're all works in progress. You know, so many times when it comes to my, my older kids, I, I compromised in areas of life. In some areas, I was too on the other side. But there's areas in my life that I know and I look back and I say, I compromise. I, I, I should have done this and I should have done that. But at the end of the day, God is in control and he's sovereign. And I'm not living in the past. I'm living today. And today I can live and not compromise. I can do what God would have me to do. What does that mean? It just means that I need to do what God would have me to do on a daily basis and trust him in everything. And that's what all of us need to do. We all need to just learn how to live together and encourage one another to, to press on. I said to you this earlier, Moses and, and, and Aaron are here to lead these people and to say, hey, guys, listen, God is who he says he is. God wants to lead us and guide us and direct us and help us. We need to be motivators one to another to press on for God and trust God in all these difficulties and all these problems and all these things that we go through in life. We need to be motivators, right? To not compromise. Don't make excuses. You know, many a time I've seen so many. You know, and, and because, listen, do you realize, folks, the freedom to choose it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't the freedom to choose a wonderful thing? Isn't it? That, that God, God has not made us robots. That we can actually choose God and serve God and sacrifice to God and really love God and do what God would have us to do. That it's actually, we can really and truly choose that. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful thing? Amen. 
Do you think, don't you think that we need to simplify our lives? That we're so busy, right? And come on, folks. This, is, this goes back to this. And one of the areas of compromise as far as with our children and, 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 and all these different things, man, it's great. Well, I don't know if it's great. <laughs> let, me, let me say it's good if you, your child's successful in the business world. The world system. The devil's world. But what about God's world? What about God's world? Is he successful there? Isn't it more important that you're a witness for God and a worshiper of God and a lover of God than a lover of the world and the business world? Do you think we've not compromised? Yeah, I know we have. There's no doubt about it. These are tough messages. This is as hard for us because we're so blessed in America, we don't even know it. We're so unthankful and, and really unholy. We're not really thinking about God and the things of God. We're going to baptize these folks. And, and, and really what they're saying in their baptism is that, hey, they're, they're, they're dying to the old life and, and rising to a new life. Amen. And going to live that life as asthma to the Lord. And by the way, not as us, the other Christians do in the church at Faith Baptist Church. Right? Right? Have you compromised? Have you compromised on the things of God? This is what I told Sue, you know, as far as her, her, her school life and basketball and, and other things that she likes to do and these different things. And I said, you know, we have to prioritize the, the, what, what, what's most important. Everything else has got to be a sideline. And I'm telling you, folks, what's most important is God and his will. That's what we have to ask most importantly, right? Is it God's will? Right? Come on, folks. Right? Is it God's will? What's God want you to do? Can I ask you a question? Now, let's just be honest, okay? And we'll go to the house. I'll, I'll let you go. Can you be happy without God? Could you take that home with you tonight? Could you meditate on that? Could you wrap your head around it? Could you really talk to God about that and, and your life could, could you really be happy without God? Now, oftentimes, we'll answer that question and we'll answer it in a hurry. But it's really about the God that you know. How much do you know about God? A lot of people would answer that with an absolute, if they were honest, yes. And there's a reason why they would. Because they really don't know who God is. And by the way, you can do that, be that way as a Christian. You can. I mean, as a, as a believer, you know. You can really not know who God is. There's nobody like God. This is what God's trying to show the children of Israel. That's why he's showing Egypt and, and really got a hold of some of these people's hearts. The Egyptians. They, they saw who God is. They, they, this, 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 this darkness that came on, they, they're, they're God, Ra, or the sun God. And, and if you look at Egypt, Egyptian uh, artifacts and all these different things, they always had that little sundial on there because they, they worshiped the sun. You know, I, man, this morning, it, it, these pictures at the chicken house are just amazing, amazing, amazing. And uh, as, as I'm taking these pictures out there and seeing the sun come up, and it's a beautiful thing just to see God and his creation. And, and man, you realize you can worship, not the sun, but you can worship God, the creator of the sun. And beautiful, beautiful. But these people worship the sun. And so God brought darkness where they didn't see the sun for three days. And they recognize, hey, 
<laughs> well, where's Ra? <laughs> he wasn't Ra Ra, was he? <laughs> he? He was toast compared to this God, the one true God. Can you live without God? Richie just said that, you know, the, the Israelites, they needed God every day. Well, so do we. So do we, but we just don't know it. And God has to do things. He has to shut things down and bring about some things and get us alone with him and, 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 and really realize, man, I, I, I need God more than I need anything else. And so do you. I don't need less of God. I need more of God. And so we compromise. What's important in your life? What's important in your life? Man, uh, uh, Richie, appreciate you talking about that uh, days of praise and man, we got to go. And, uh, you know, and that was, that was so good. You know, and, and once they got finished, you know, you know what God told them? Remember what he told them? Get out there and enjoy. Eat the, eat the fat and all these different things that he, he spoke about there at, uh, uh, after they uh, again worshipped and, 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 and they saw their sin. And, and it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the it's a whole thing, folks. Listen, it's the whole idea of repentance is but for a moment, but but joy is everlasting. God, God's not holding out on you. God wants you to have a feast. Amen. He just wants you to come to him and admit that you're wrong and, and that you're going after the wrong things. And when you do, he, he serves it up. But you know what he serves up to us? Himself. There's nobody like God. Listen, folks, don't you want to be, let me ask you, oh, I know I said we're going to go. Don't you want to be a loving person? Did you realize it's impossible to be a loving person apart from God? You, you can't. You cannot be a loving person without God. I don't care how much you try. You cannot be a loving person without God. Do you want to be a joyful person? Just a, a joy. Now, folks, I'm just talking about joy. Right? A joy. You can't be a joyful person without God. You can't. You see, because joy is not determined upon your circumstances. It's a person. And do you want to be a peaceful person, a person that just has peace in the midst of the storm? Where, where tragedy comes and, and yet you're, you're calm, you have the peace in your soul that God's in control. I mean, now, the folks, these are easy words to say, you know. But it's possible with God. Amen. Did you realize salvation is more than just going to heaven? Now, folks, Philip, everybody wants to go to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven. I talked to a guy today about, man, folks, you got to help me. There's a balance in this. There's a balance in the giving the gospel. The gospel, the salvation is more than just going to heaven. I can go help folks right now. We can all go together and knock on doors and say, hey, do you want to go to heaven? Well, hey, just pray this prayer, you know? With no working of God. No thinking about, hey, Jesus, he died. He, he was buried. He, he, he died a cruel death because of your sin and because of my sin. And recognizing ourselves as a sinner. Realizing what Jesus did on the cross for us. The Spirit of God has to show you that. Right? God help us. Right? What kind of person do you want to be? You know, I'm going to ask everybody. What kind of person do you want to be? What kind of relationship do you want to have? people, right? <laughs> right? Are you right? I want to motivate you. But I know that the true motivator is the Spirit of God. You know what he uses? The Word of God. Right? We are so kind of passed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Amen? Right? Don't let it just be here. Let, let, it, let, it, let it get in your very being. Right? God help us, folks. What do you want to be? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. We gotta go, don't we? Gotta go. We got, got greater things to do, better things to do. It's just out there, you know? 
There's all kinds of things, you know, on YouTube and TV and Facebooks and, and everything. Got to, you know, check my Instagram page and, and you know, there's so many things today. It's just exciting, you know. We, well, we got an exhibition football. <laughs> That's exciting, isn't it? What do you want to be? Have you compromised on God? Have you listened to Satan in the world when they tell you that everything out there is better than what God has to offer? Jeremy, I think about you and that, that what's your little girl's name? I'm not going to sing that song. Jeremy, what's your? Gracie. 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 I think about Jeremy and Gracie and, and uh, excited for them. But, man, you know what y'all need? Y'all need God. Y'all need God. You know what the rest of you guys need? Y'all need God. I'm not talking about some fake God. I'm not talking about Egyptian gods. They were fake gods. They weren't real. They couldn't do nothing. Right? I'm not talking about Baal. I'm not talking about Buddha. Right? I'm not talking about Allah or Muhammad. And I'm talking about Jehovah. Don't we need God? Don't we need God, Richie? You see, the Israelites need a God. The church needs God. <laughs> Revelation 3.20. He's still knocking. You going to let him in? Or are you going to keep compromising? Are we going to keep saying no to God? Do you know there's a wide world of people out there that need motivation? They need, they need somebody to come alongside and say, man, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I think again. I think about John and Micah. Now, John hated running. Micah liked it. John hated it. You know, he's out there laboring. Micah's out there just running. And John's five minutes behind him. And, uh, but anyway, you know, that's why I had to, I can, Micah's all the way up here. John's back down. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Now, Sue told me yesterday she didn't like that. So I told Karen today, I said, i got to find a different way to motivate Sue. She didn't want me running next to her. I said, let's go! <laughs> she wanted me to do it a different way. Well, I'm going to find a way to motivate her. I'm going to cut some of that time off one way or another. But spiritually, who are you motivating spiritually? Motivating anybody spiritually? Or are you taking them the other way? you taking them one way or another. Right? Aren't you? Right? God help us not to compromise. Listen to me, folks. The world system, Satan, all these things, they don't have anything compared to what God desires for you in life. Those are easy words to say, you know, because we all have fights and we all have battles. We all have things that we want in life. But at the end of the day, at the end of all of this, God is greater than anything. Isn't it ironic that we're going through the book of Hebrews and in Exodus and God's showing himself both ways that he's better than everything. And the Bible tells us that Moses saw, didn't he? Doesn't it say that in Hebrews chapter 11? That he saw Christ, the invisible Christ. He looked forward and saw Christ. Let's stand to our feet and have a word of prayer. Father, grateful for who you are. Thank you, Father. Sorry I went too long, God. I just pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd help us, Lord God. Help us, God. Help us. Father, help us to see the need. Father, we're never going to see you until we see the need of you. And so we pray you'd open up our eyes, Father. God, help us not to compromise. Help us not to listen to the world, the flesh, and the devil, Father. When they say, well, I'll let you do this, or you can do this, Stay the course, Father, and do exactly what you tell us to do. Help us to stay the course. Father, we love you and praise you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.